Hi, I'm Ryan Harvey. I'm 15 years old and I have three siblings. My 16 year old brother Luke is severely autistic. He cannot speak, he still needs diapers, and he still watches Sesame Street. He can't take care of himself without 24 7 constant one on one supervision. His favorite thing to do is watch Sesame Street and Bear in the Big Blue House on his iPad. I love seeing him so happy when he's watching those videos. My favorite thing to do with Lou is to go around the neighborhood and take walks with him. Luke has really taught me to find joy in just the simplest things in life. Recently, I wrote an essay about autism and bullying and I gave a speech about it. I would like to show that to you. Please enjoy. My name is Ryan Harvey. I'm 14 years old and I have a diagnosis of high functioning autism. I also have a brother with severe autism. I spent most of my life trying to fit in, even though I've always felt different and left out. People made fun of me. I pretended to be okay with it while it still killed me inside, slowly but surely chipping away at my self-esteem. My appearance and arachnoid cyst hydrocephaly making my head appear larger, my lack of athletic ability, and my sensitivity, and my lack of social awareness made me prime target for these for many, many years. I've always been a protector and supporter of my brother Luke, who does not speak and needs help in all aspects of his life. My heart hurts when I think of all the suffering he made me during, but he never reported because he's not hurt. In ninth grade, I hit an all-time low. High school was a nightmare. People laughed at me, mocked my physical appearance, and made fun of my dad. They called me a loser, called me weird because of my difference in interests. This made me feel hopeless and helpless. When my mom tried to report these incidents in school, we were told that I was just being too sensitive. I was told to skip my lunch period to avoid all these people that were making fun of me, and I was told to avoid certain hallways so that I would avoid bullies making my life harder because I would often end up late to class because of this. I, the victim, was punished rather than the perpetrator. Finally, I was targeted on social media. I knew I couldn't ever go back. I became so desperate that I came up with a plan to end my game. I was going to jump off the roof of the high school. I luckily shared this feeling with my private counselor and my family. I was ultimately transferred to an alternative school and hospital after two weeks. I started to feel healthy again, and I finally felt as if I mattered. Village school changed my life. My advice to my Hicksville High School is to look at us as contributing members of the school system. We have so much to offer, but we need your help. When bullying is reported, it needs to be taken seriously and not disregarded. It is important that you let students know that you care about their emotional well-being. Please let the bullies know that it is not okay to prey on those who are different. In the words of Temple Grandin, an adult autistic individual advocate for the community. We are different, not less. I believe that some type of social emotional learning should be incorporated into the curriculum in schools. Programs such as Challenge Day and assemblies such as Brian's Story should be shown. Students need to be taught empathy and what the effects of bullying looks like. All school staff should be well versed and in confidence with the Dignity Act, as it is now a law that states that all students should be in a school environment that is free for us to I know this will be an uphill battle, as there are many bullies out there, but if given the chance, we just may change the world. I feel very fortunate to have gotten out of the path of my bullies, but so many of us don't. People like my brother, maybe even people like you, look out for adults to look out for us. If they don't, go well. Take the leap, make the change, promise you will it. Sincerely, Ryan Harvey, the voice for those who can't talk. Hello again. I hope you I hope you liked my speech. I'm sorry that, about the quality, by the way. I mean, all I could find was a video on an iPhone. <laughs> my goal in the future is to be a spokesperson for individuals with autism. I really want to let people know that they're, they're not alone. I, we can all accomplish great things. Me, my brother, anyone, no matter what we have. I would like to do this through my passion film. 
Thank you for sitting through this. Oh, by the way, I have, I asked my brother and sister a few questions and they would like to share their thoughts on autism with you guys. So I was born after Luke. I never knew what it was like to not have a brother with autism. You were born many years before Luke. What was it like before having a brother with autism and after? Like, what was the what was the change like? So before Luke was born, I had a pretty normal childhood. I did all the things that typical kids do. I had sports games. My parents came to my sports games. I went to dance. They came to my recitals. But things changed a little bit once Luke was born. Um, the saying, it takes a village that's used to describe the many hands and people that are needed to raise a child is pretty, pretty influential in what I'm about to say because raising an autistic child pretty much takes an Olympic village. Um, we went from just having a typical childhood to have, having to triple lock every door in the house. Um, my mom and dad couldn't come to my sports games as often. Things changed a little bit, but it also changed for the better. Like I said before, he, he influenced my career goals and he's really been a blessing in disguise, so I really wouldn't have it any other way. There's been goods and there's been bads, but altogether it's really been a blessing. So, when Luke was born, how did your life at home change? I guess life at home changed because, as a family, it made it harder to go out and do things together. Um, in my personal life, it was you know it was harder to keep relationships. It was, it was hard to bring people over. It was something that you don't expect people to understand. So it was harder harder to have people over. We always had somebody at the house, strangers, you know, nice people, but for the most part, strangers. How has having a brother with autism changed you? It's changed me a lot. You know, it's, it's hard to really say how there's so many that it was kind of a blessing in disguise. It's, you know, it's something you would never wish on anybody, obviously, but it teaches you a lot of things. It, you know, things become more valuable. You, you know, you learn to appreciate things. I think it's made me more sympathetic, more emp empathetic. I think it's made me more understanding person and you know, I appreciate it and I love the fact that we got to experience this every day because everything about it, the community, the family, everybody's behind you, it's, it's a great network of people. What do you want Luke to have in the future? What are your wishes for Luke in the future? It's a hard thing to send Luke off to live with people that you don't really know, which is typically the case. But, you know, it's, it's a hard subject. So, um, I just want to be in a place that would give him comfortability, give my mother a peace of mind. So, that's it. This is my brother Luke. Luke, say hi to the camera. Yeah, say hi. Luke, say hi. Hi.